Hello again. Um, this video is a follow-up of the one about optical production control for large area coders. And here this um, is just showing you a demo of the brain software which I have developed in order to simplify the real-time analysis of a large-scale uh, coating production on glass, on glass paints. Um, what I will do here, I will work with a simulated production. I have written a small program that can produce optical spectra like they would have been measured in a real factory. And uh, I will now start the simulation and show you uh, what it does, and then we will an analyze the generated data. So let's just start the production, and then we can look here what happens. Actually, these stations here um, are the deposition stations that generate something on the sample, usually thin films. Uh, here is the glass coming in, and the red stations are the measurement stations that record spectra. I have four stations here that record uh, transmission spectra and uh, one station at the end, which is the traverse system that scans across the glass plates and measures at the various positions, reflectance spectra from both sides, and the transmission. Here, this is pane number 6774, and it now passes this station, which deposits the, the bottom uh, layer and the first silver layer of a double silver system. Uh, they will be, these spectra will be analyzed soon here as the pain arrives here. This is the center oxide production, uh, next uh, silver layer deposition, and finally the, the top uh, oxide, which is produced here. So you can see in real time how the paints are moved through the coater, and uh, whenever a spectrum is recorded, it is sent to the brain system and brain analyzes these data. The inline spectra here, they are um, analyzed by a module which, which is this one, which is called Bright Eye Inline. And this uses a code software inside to do the analysis. I can show you how it looks. So this is the code software. Uh, whenever it receives a, a new spectrum, it loads the measured data here, and then it does the analysis. That's why this is the incoming glass, which is characterized. Um, this is uh, the, I guess, the full stack already. Uh, we have to wait for the next spectrum. The inline analysis is pretty relaxed. Every fit. Um, takes only a very short time. The results are stored in a database, and whenever a pane arrives at the new station and there is a new measurement, we will pick up the previous results, uh, adapt the coating with the previous obtained values, and then do the fit for the new layers that have been uh, added to the ones that we already know. So every fit step is very quick, very short, so a single code program can handle all the spectra of a complete production. And still, it's not very busy. It's waiting uh, most of the time. OK, uh, that was the inline analysis. Uh, the XC2 analysis here requires more computational time because we have several uh, we have several measurements on several positions, and uh, a single code program would not be sufficient to do that. Uh, so the Bright Eye Traverse module here uses several code programs. I can show you how many. In this case, four, which analyze in parallel incoming spectra. So the amount of incoming spectra is di distributed into four parts, and every uh, code instance gets a certain number of spectra. 
so that uh, we can follow up with production concerning the speed. Um, in this demo, I just analyze uh, 11 positions on the glass, so the conditions here are relaxed, and four code instances on my laptop are sufficient in order to uh, have the same speed of the analysis than the production speed. In the real uh, situation, uh, where we have maybe 32 positions measured on one piece of glass, we need more. Um, some customers work with 10 or 16 instances, and the record is 13 code, 30 code programs running in parallel on a, uh, in that case, kind of workstation, which has many cores, two processors with 16 cores each, so 32 cores available for data analysis. And then um, it's possible to follow even uh, the production of a very complex coating like a triple silver. Okay, so these uh, stations, these analysis stations, um, they produce data, and of course uh, we need to um, handle these data in a way that the operators see what they produce in, an, in a clear way. The, um, the data are stored in a table, uh, which is uh, managed by the main brain application. So you can see here the uh, re results coming in, uh, the measurement station, the pain ID, the, we get information about the quality of the fit and about the position on the glass where this measurement has been taken. And then to the right uh, in this table, we get results uh, in a, as numbers and uh, also with a color code, the blue numbers are a little bit, the values are uh, too high, the red values are too small. So we can already see from the color uh, if the production is going well or if we should do something. But of course, reading this table would not be very efficient. I just wanted to show you how the results look like. Uh, actually, we, we have uh, many, many different options how to visualize these results. Um, we can take a look here first at the history. Uh, this gives the parameters versus time. And uh, we can take a look at thickness values, for example. Obtain thickness values. These are um, the, the bottom oxide dielectric layer number one, the first silver layer, uh, the main oxide, uh, the center oxide of this double silver coating, the second silver layer. And you can see here also with the color code uh, if the values are too low or too high. Uh, okay, <coughs> in the middle, <coughs> sorry, uh, the center line is always the target value. Then there are two red lines uh, above and below the target, the target line. And those are the tolerated uh, values, tolerated maximum value, tolerated minimum value. So this is out of specification here. It's too thin, and these layers here, uh, the, the center layer is too thick. So this would tell the operator already from the inline analysis, well, we have to do something. So what they would do, uh, let's start here with the first silver layer. They should make it thicker. Uh, it's about nine nanometers here, but it should be 10. So let's go to the controllers. Uh, here we can tune the first silver layer, make it a little bit thicker, and then we have to see uh, what happens uh, when we follow the production. So uh, the first silver layer is now produced in a different way, so soon this should be changing to, um, to a larger thickness, I hope already for the next pane. And, but in, in addition, while we wait for new results, we can make more decisions. 
Here we can make the center oxide already smaller. So um, but the next pane here should arrive soon. Okay, that was a little bit too big. But uh, let's do the center oxide smaller. And um, then we can see if we have to do more uh, things. Center oxide smaller, that would be done here. Maybe I did a little bit too much for the first silver layer. So let's assume that this will uh, improve the coating and let's let's continue. So actually maybe I should mention here, this is a display versus time. You can uh, scale the display, you can zoom it up uh, so you can see the individual paints here, how they run through the system. Um, you could display uh, continuous lines instead of the bar graphs, then you have no no color code anymore. Um, but if you have a long time, if you s want to see long time trends, this is easier to follow probably. Uh, the display here now is based on time. You can also display this based on uh, pane number, pane ID. So then you have for every pane ID, you have the same spacing. This is useful if you are tuning your coda and you have large time gaps between one pane and the next, then you can use, um, you can deactivate this option. But usually you can display uh, thickness values versus time and also the bar graphs. That's actually the style that I would prefer. Um, you can see already now that the center oxide is now within specification, also the first silver layer, and we can now do um, uh, some fine tuning on the second silver layer. Um, but maybe before I do that, I will show you some more options that you have here. Um, actually, you, you, can dis you can have several pages of this so-called history uh, plot. Uh, you can show color values versus time uh, or transmission values versus time for the individual stations. This is a matter of configuration of the brain, uh, this brain product. And uh, I prefer usually thickness values because this gives the most direct uh, information for the operators. Uh, here they really know what they uh, produ produce at the moment. Okay, there's a standard uh, page generating thickness profiles or color value profiles. Uh, in this case, I show for the five main layers of the double silver coating, the, uh, the bottom oxide, first silver layer, second silver layer, uh, second center oxide, sorry, second silver layer, and top oxide. I show thickness values versus position on the glass. So these are the results of the ex situ traverse analysis. And uh, I show those results for the latest pane that has been investigated on top. And if you go down, you go back in time. So this is the latest pane 6789. This, this is 6788, 6787. So you see four paints here. Uh, so if there is a time development, you see the history. For example, here, the profile of the center oxide has been changed. It, the values were too high, and now they are within specification. And also here, the silver layer is now closer to what it should be. Um, Okay, um, you can also see the measured spectra uh, in a standard graphics, which I, which I have in every brain uh, installation. So you can group, you can have several pages. These are the in situ spectra for several paints. You, you, so you can also see color coded at time development in white, the latest one and then getting darker the, the older spectra. Uh, you can also see here the ex situ values uh, versus position. 
so uh, spectra versus position so you can see how even the spectra are in order to get a feeling for the evenness also of the other values and just to check if the measurements are okay or if something is wrong with the spectrometer hardware okay the next section here you can have up to six so-called operator displays and these are flexible displays that you can uh, define by yourself they are not standardized you can uh, show very different items in each display and I just show you a few example of examples of what is possible uh, you can have for example just numbers uh, telling the operator this is the bottom oxide first silver center oxide second silver top oxide layers these are the current values uh, these are the target values and so these are the recommendations make this smaller by 7% make this smaller by 3% make this bigger by 4% and so this makes it easy let's let's follow this recommendation make the dialect the um, the bottom layer thicker by 7% if I would be the operator I could go to my um, uh, set my knobs here and, and change this value and then we can uh, later see if it helps and we can do further uh, steps in addition it tells me to make the first silver layer a little bit thicker the second silver layer a little bit thinner so I can also try to do that this one a little bit thicker this one a little bit thinner let's see if that helps and um, if it improves uh, over the long run so you can also generate uh, profiles here and this was um, this is a way how to visualize profiles which is a little bit different from the standard way in, in brain uh, here you see basically profiles for different layers and you see the history of three paints so this is the, the in white the latest one that has been measured recently in red the one before and in black the one before before that one so you can see a time development a little bit of a time development if you make changes you can instantly see now what has changed so uh, here you can see during the analysis how the profiles arrive uh, whenever a code program doing the analysis is ready it saves the data and then the data are immediately displayed and contribute to the to the profile so here this obviously was not really successful we have been in within specification for the um, bottom oxide but now we are outside so I made it too thick uh, and the second silver layer here is too thin so I have to go and uh, make this thicker and make this a little bit oh sorry that was the first one make this thinner so let's let's wait uh, how this develops um, the white curve here should come up again and but we will we will see in the near future if this change was successful okay let's go to the uh, to, to a next operator display a next example uh, these are examples of different versions of a history gra uh, graph they all show 20 paints from uh, right to left so on the left side there's always the latest the latest paint on the right side this is these are older ones and we can select in the configuration how many paints we would like to see and we, we also can uh, select the um, we, we, we can select the style of the graph so we can have dots here connected by lines or we can have bar graphs and uh, so this can be freely configured you can choose between different styles and these are some examples you can also show uh, spectra in operator views so you can mix a view of spectra 
with view, views of thicknesses or color values versus time or versus position. And uh, this time I should mention that you can uh, show these operator views on several screens, so you are not limited to a single computer screen. If you have a computer which has two or three or more screens uh, with a high-quality graphics card, you can distribute these views uh, on several screens. So you have three screens showing different uh, operator displays, and uh, with the latest brain version, it's also possible to visualize those views um, on the network, on other computers in your company, so you can watch the production uh, actually from any computer uh, in your offices or research labs. Um, okay, I guess operator views five and six are empty still, so we could uh, generate some graphs there. Um, let's go to another feature of Brain. Uh, you can couple Brain to an external SQL database. So in, in this case, I use a Microsoft SQL Express database, uh, and you can export all the results uh, to this external SQL database. It can be a company database or a bigger database to, to store all the data for a very, very long time. Uh, or you want, let's say, do your own analysis routines on the on the data that you measure. So it's useful to get this data um, in uh, an external database if you would like to do that. You can also have statistical data for the thickness profiles, for example, or color profiles. So for every um, number or every parameter that uh, code fit is, uh, fits for a, um, a position on the glass, you get statistical information about the minimum, the maximum, and the average, and the standard deviation. Um, so you can uh, see if the average thickness on a glass pane is OK, and if the variation within the glass is OK. And actually, you can define uh, statistical uh, graphs. So you can see graphs, history graphs of the average of all the layer values and the average of all the parameter values. Um, and you can specify uh, also target ranges and classify a pane as being OK if the statistical values, values are within the specifications. So you can set thresholds for the minimum and maximum value of the average, for example, and then you are in this green zone and everything is fine. Actually, if you dive a little bit deeper into the brain details, you can define a, uh, a list of conditions that a pane has to meet, and if all the conditions are met, um, these are so-called statistical checks, uh, then the pane is marked as being OK. And we can see that here. Uh, some of the panes are good, some are bad. And so the red sections here are a, vi a violation. The AG1 average is, is not OK. So we have to work on that in order to make the panes good again. Uh, so these statistical checks um, are shown here, and uh, they can also be exported. So you have a, a nice table of your production results. Uh, let's just take a look at the, at the system here. So AG1 should be smaller, AG2 should be smaller, the center oxide should be bigger. Maybe we should do something now. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong button. We are here. AG1 should be smaller. AG2 should be smaller. And the center oxide a little bit bigger. I have to do some fine tuning here. Um, and then we can uh, take a look if 
this seem to help. Okay, yeah, you can clearly see the silver layers are too high. Now this is okay already. So AG1 should be good. And let's hope that we can find this back in the statistical checks when this is finished. We have the, the last point here. Then, okay, this is good now. AG1 is within specification. Okay, uh, I should mention also, if we go to the results page here, uh, that all these data are stored in a database, in an internal brain database. Um, they are also stored in an archive folder. The archive folder can be anywhere in your factory network. So you can have a backup of all the results on a different computer, independent of the brain computer. Um, you can define a data export, an automatic data export at midnight usually, that you store all the results obtained until midnight in, a, let's say, an Excel file or a CSV file. Uh, and this is part of the archive. So every day you get a file of the, of the daily production. And you can also define some details like how many data are stored for how long. Uh, data are stored. This is important for the history graphs. So if you want to follow in time, uh, you have to tell brain how long it should keep the data. Usually, I configure this in a way that they are stored for um, two or three days, and then they are de deleted. The values are still uh, backed up in the archive, of course. Okay, so this is what you can do uh, with uh, with Brain, if you follow reproduction in real time, and I hope that uh, if you uh, decide to work with Brain, that it can be very useful in order to keep your production within specifications uh, all the time, and that it makes a useful tool for your operators to have a, a less stressy daily routine. Thanks a lot for watching this demonstration. Bye-bye.